Welcome to Roland Barthes and the Theory of Social Myth. In this section, we're once again going to look at the mythical character of culture and the media. Roland Barthes gave rise to the media theory as an analyst of media as a myth, the narrator of myths, and the dynamic instrument for changing myths and creating new ones. So in this uh, section of the work, we're just looking at the meaning of the signifier, the communicator, the person creating the content, and the interpretations that could be layered within the content, such as the denotative, connotative, and the ideological meaning. By mythical meaning, Barthes means socially constructed values. A myth is not seen as a non-truth, but a socially constructed truth with an underlying ideological meaning aimed at maintaining the status quo. Societies create and maintain myths for their own sake of their survival and often the cost of others. Barthes had used a series of photographs called The Family of Man, which depicted many people of different nations with social backgrounds and ages, and the meaning of it was to convey the everyday behavior of people throughout the world, despite their race and their cultures. Within that series of photographs, the communicator is implying that birth, death, work, knowledge, and play, irrespective of our differences, are universal, which he calls the universality of being. The myth hides the real fate and the state of man, and namely extreme differences in power and wealth. And then we do have some quotes on page 253. They also make examples of the concern here that Barthes feels that the objects function exactly the same mythical way about wine. Wine, for example, is not just one drink among others in France, but a totem drink. Corresponding to the milk of the Dutch, the tea ceremony taken by the British royal family, it is the foundation of collective morality. For the French, to believe in wine is a coercive act, and drinking wine a ritual social integration. In generating mythical meaning, cultures seek to make their own norms seem fact of nature. For well, this part we're saying it's not with the quality of mind, but rather the second order, the mythical meaning that is given to wine, such as that the culture of, in France that wine is good and the goodness of wine is therefore a myth. We can also analyze in South African um, terms here, the braai place and what that means to us. A group of people um, sitting at a braai, what would they mean in terms of the meaning of that? So here we have sort of the explanation of what I was just talking about, which is that beyond what you're looking at in the media content, can you find the second order of meaning, the mythical meaning that's being conveyed? In South Africa, we do have many myths about people in our culture. We also have myths about women and the status of family and so on. And I've used an example here, the cartoon strip of Madden and Eve, and how this has been um, published uh, quite a lot and also has comic books and is a lot of myths about the social relationship between black and white South Africans. As we move on, we can also talk about the ideology of apartheid and how there was many racially based myths back in sort of that day. They go on to talk about this, that the Christian nationalist education, early justifications of apartheid could have stood on biblical grounds, preached and reinforced in apartheid. And the media played quite a role in how they portrayed the apartheid myth. On page 254, we have some examples of that, that you can look through in your time and about well, sort of the how Africans played negative roles in South African films, such as that whites and blacks did not appear to give them the same television advertisements. Because of the unfavorable publicity given to black people in the media, legislation, education, the church, the myth that blacks aren't fit to rule the country was reinforced. Returning to Barthes, there are many layers um, in terms of the meaning to the object that has a secondary meaning associated to a particular culture. When looking at a product advertised by the media, we need to look at the meanings through social conventions associated with the product, its position and consumption. Barthes argues that the meanings are determined by the bougie, who are victims to capitalist considerations such as owning a BMW and Mercedes implies membership of a specific social class. If you look at the figure seven, you'd notice that this is just a regular Versace ad. But if you look at the secondary meaning, it's implying that due to buying these products or being part of the Versace brand, that you are not part of that sort of other lower economic class. We also have binary opposition here between what is considered to be the rich and what is poor in Levi Strauss's um, sort of theory there. 
adverts do reinforce myths. What are the myths to which motor car adver advertisements appeal? In these adverts, the owner tends to be a man who is rich, masculine, happy, and has it all. And how do we know this? It's because ads tend to use the same codes and symbol, um, signs there and symbols. David Beckham, who is a celebrity who is also could co be considered handsome, he's seen wearing an expensive watch. The background shows an open road and there's dark background and it's very moody to indicate adventure. And some adverts will even place a woman, attractive woman as well. The relationship between myth and stereotype is that myth is social beliefs are mainly communicated through stereotypes. Stereotypes become part of the culture of a particular group that members accept them. Example is during a party there were many myths about black people that they are criminals, they can't rule country and so on. People who support a party did not question those myths and notice how they also benefited from these myths. The media would um, arguably play such a strong role in portraying and strengthening those myths. In apartheid, the media portrayed black people negatively and associated with them with crime, and they enforced that black people were inferior to white um, people, which was considered at the time the superior culture. As we move on to this section, in apartheid, South African movies tended to cast black people in roles of clowns, servants, laborers, and thieves, and murderers. These movies depicted black people as deceitful. These movies would emphasize the difference between white and black, and that would show the binary opposition. The media did not question these myths, but played a part in its social conventional truth. In, since the 1970s, things began to change. There became a more balanced representation of questioning myths about race. This could also be said for the media's portrayal of women and homosexuals. All groups seem to strengthen their myths about groups by thinking and responding to them in terms of those stereotypes. Black people also have myths and stereotypes about white people, and Kosovo speaking people have myths about Zulu people. In South Africa, English language media, there are examples of Afrikaans being portrayed as backward, headless supporters, overweight, and so on. And that myths may still be existing, but they are and should be beginning to change. When we're looking at these two theories, we should just take from them that we can deduct that stereotypes are the result of emphasizing oppositions and differences between people and groups and also have the purpose of strengthening myths between them um, about people and groups. The next section is going to be looking at the characteristics of working and working of stereotypes.